The three weeks of October 2002 witnessed a horrific series of coordinated shootings in the District of Columbia, Virginia, Maryland, and the Washington metropolitan area that made life completely upended. Children had indoor recess the entire time, and outside activities were ruled off. Moms made their kids sit on the front porch instead of standing at the bus stop until the bus showed up, and they canceled homecoming. People zigzagged when walking down the street so they wouldn't be moving targets. Most schools were on lockdown every day because people were constantly terrified. The whole shebang made October 2002 seem like the longest three weeks in the Washington metropolitan area. And who were the enraged lunatics behind this terror? John Allen Muhammad and his teenage accomplice, Lee Boyd Malvo, the kid who never talks, knows all about weapons. What motivated Alan Muhammad and his teenage accomplice, Lee Boyd Malvo, to kill? How did an innocent soul in Lee Boyd Malvo become manipulated by Alan Muhammad to kill? Why did his classmate tag Lee Boyd Malvo as the kid who never talks but knows all about weapons? Where is Alan Muhammad? And has Lee Boyd Malvo's six life sentences without the possibility of parole been reconsidered? We'll unravel everything here, but before we do, please kindly subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more true crime videos that struck fear in America. Lee Boyd Malvo was born on February 18, 1985, to Leslie Malvo, a mason, and Una James, a seamstress who never married in Kingston, Jamaica. John Allen Muhammad, born Williams, was born on December 31, 1960, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In August 1978, Muhammad enlisted in the Louisiana Army National Guard at Baton Rouge as a combat engineer before he was honorably discharged from the Army with the rank of sergeant on April 24, 1994, after 16 years of service and was adorned with several awards. Malvo and his mother first met John Allen Muhammad in Antigua and Barbuda and developed a strong friendship. Muhammad's mother, Una Sion James, was ready to do anything to travel to the U.S. Thus, she collaborated with Muhammad and flew to Fort Myers, Florida using false documents and left Boyd Malvo with Muhammad. Malvo and his mother illegally lived in Miami in 2001, where the Border Patrol apprehended them in Bellingham. In January 2002, Malvo was released on a $1,500 bond. Muhammad converted Boyd Malvo to Islam and isolated him from his mother so that he could manipulate and brainwash him greatly. Meanwhile, Muhammad pronounced death on the country's people because he lost his children to his wife's custody and never saw them again. Now he had a boy in Boyd Malvo to kickstart his mission. Malvo enrolled in Bellingham High School with Muhammad falsely listed as his father. He gained the nickname, The Kid Who Never Talks, Knows All About Weapons, from other students in a weapon discussion class for his deep knowledge of guns. Malvo practiced his marksmanship on the bullseye firing range adjacent to the gun shop and shoplifted a Bushmaster XM-15 from the bullseye shooter supply before he matured into killing. On February 16, 2002 was when the first shooting occurred. Lee Boyd Malvo heartlessly shot and killed 21-year-old Kenya Cole Cook in Tacoma, Washington. Cook heard a knock on her door and cracked it open, hoping it was her aunt, Isa Nichols. Isa Nichols had been a good friend of Muhammad's ex-wife, Mildred, and had encouraged her to seek divorce due to the ill-treatment melted on her by Alan Muhammad. On March 19, 2002, the duo struck again and killed a six-year-old Jerry Taylor, practicing chip shots at a Tucson, Arizona golf course. The snipers hit Jerry with a single bullet to the chest from Muhammad's blue 1990 Chevrolet Caprice sedan that he used to fire shots from long ranges. In the same fashion, two deaths and four injuries followed in other states from March through July 2002. They resumed again on August 1st, 2002, when the 17-year-old Boyd Malvo fired a shot at John Gaeta's neck at a parking lot in Hammond, Louisiana. Luckily for the 51-year-old John Gaeta, the bullet exited through his back and he lay on the ground and pretended to be dead while watching Malvo get away with his wallet. Gaeta stood after the shooter left and went to a hospital for treatment. On March 1, 2010, he received a letter of apology from Malvo. Muhammad and Malvo were linked to various preliminary shootings and killings before shifting their target to the Baltimore, Washington area, which started when a victimless shot pierced through a window of a Michael's craft store in Aspen Hill that nearly hit Ann Chapman, a cashier at the store. Because no one was hit, no one cared until about an hour later when James Martin, 
A 55-year-old program analyst at NOAA was struck by a sniper's bullet at 2201 Randolph Road and a grocery parking lot in Wheaton. By 10 o'clock on the morning of October 3rd, four more people were brutally shot dead in Montgomery County, Aspen Hill, Tacoma, and the District of Columbia. This happened within approximately two hours in those nearby areas. That anyone could be the next victim threw people into panic attacks, and the worst part was that the victims were killed by a single shot fired from some distance, and in each case, the killers struck and vanished. Chief Charles Moose, the Montgomery County, Maryland Police Department leader, took up the case and involved the FBI and other law enforcement agencies. Within days, about 400 FBI agents poured across the country. They set up a toll-free number to get tips from the public and a joint operations center to help Montgomery County investigators run the case. Still, the killings continued. In Rockville, Maryland, James L. Buchanan, a 39-year-old landscaper, was shot while mowing the grass at the Fitzgerald Auto Malls. In Montgomery County, a 54-year-old part-time taxi cab driver, Prem Kumar Walker, was killed while pumping gasoline into his taxi at a mobile station. In Kensington, Maryland, a 25-year-old Lori Ann Lewis Rivera was killed at the Shell station. In Norbeck, Sarah Ramos, a 34-year-old babysitter and housekeeper, was killed while seated on a bench and reading a book. In Washington, D.C., Pascal Charlotte, a 72-year-old retired carpenter, was shot and killed. As a result of these hourly killings, these areas were greatly deserted with no recess or outdoor physical education classes. Schools in Montgomery County and Washington, D.C. declared a lockdown, while others took precautionary measures since the whole place seemed to be engulfed by the unknown monsters and the police had no answer yet. Some people had reported seeing a white box truck hurriedly speeding off after the Washington, D.C. shooting, while others reported having seen a blue Chevrolet Caprice. Both of these reports meant that the police had pieces of information to work with. Muhammad and Boyd Malvo continued to terrorize the states, shooting and injuring fellow citizens at random. On October 17, 2002, a caller who boasted of being the sniper called the FBI and said that he was responsible for the murder of two women during a robbery in Montgomery on September 21st. Although there were killings in a liquor store in Montgomery, Alabama, only one person was killed. This set in motion a chain of events that led to the capture of the pair of snipers. The investigators found that a crime similar to what the caller described had indeed occurred. On October 21st, evidence gathered by the investigators were taken to the FBI laboratory. The next day, the FBI fingerprint database produced a match of Lee Boyd Malvo's fingerprints found at the Benjamin Tasker Middle School site with one lifted from the Montgomery liquor store dropped at the crime scene. The FBI was able to link these fingerprints to Malvo due to his fingerprinting during a previous arrest in Washington state. Further background research revealed that Malvo had a link with John Allen Muhammad and that Muhammad had a Bushmaster 223 rifle plus a registered blue Chevy Caprice with the license plate of NDA 21Z in New Jersey. Authorities were quick to issue a media alert to the public to be on the lookout for a dark blue Chevrolet Caprice sedan. On October 24th, the hunt for Lee Boyd Malvo and John Allen Muhammad began with the combined force of Maryland State Police and Montgomery County SWAT officers. Shortly after, the snipers were found sleeping at a rest stop in their car. Montgomery County Police Chief Charles Moose relayed this cryptic message to the sniper. You have indicated that you want us to do and say certain things. You have asked us to say, we have caught the sniper like a duck in a noose. We understand that hearing us say this is important to you. Before, Muhammad and Boyd were nabbed without a struggle. Evidence found from the car included a Bushmaster 223 caliber weapon and bipod. The car had a hole cut in the trunk near the license plate where shots could be fired from the vehicle without interruption. Ballistics tests later conclusively linked the seized rifle to 11 of the 14 shootings, including one in which no one was injured. During the trials in Virginia in the fall of 2003, Muhammad and Malvo were found guilty of murder and weapon charges. The jury in Muhammad's case condemned him to death, while Malvo's jury condemned him to life in prison without parole instead of the death penalty. As Malvo was 17 years old when he committed the crimes, he was exempted from the death penalty as ruled by the Supreme Court. Still, he could be extradited to Alabama, Louisiana, and other states for prosecution. On April 22, 2005, 
the Supreme Court affirmed Muhammad's death penalty because the murder was part of an act of terrorism based on a handwritten note demanding $10 million. Muhammad was executed by lethal injection on November 2009 and pronounced dead five minutes later. After extensive psychological counseling, Malvo revealed that he wasn't the trigger man for every shooting as he had admitted earlier, and that Muhammad abused him repeatedly. He further outlined detailed aspects of all the shootings. In 2014, Malvo was incarcerated at the Red Onion State Prison and sent apology messages to his victims. On August 16th, 2022, the Maryland Court of Appeals ordered a resentencing for Malvo in line with the Supreme Court decision. Do you think Boyd Malvo was very much neglected and emotionally strained in his childhood? Do you think that growing up in poverty or being abused as a child or adult does not excuse hurting someone else? Should Lee Boyd Malvo be pardoned? Tell us in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.